The Tibetan Book of the Dead, translated with commentary by Francesca Frimanto and Chongyam Trumpa. Forward. The Bardo, Itroskro, is one of a series of instructions on six types of liberation. Liberation through hearing, liberation through wearing, liberation through seeing, liberation through remembering liberation through tasting, and liberation through touching. They were composed by Padma Samblava and written down by his wife, Yeshi Sogyal, along with the sadhana of the two mandalas of 42 peaceful and 58 wrathful deities. Padma Sambhava buried these texts in the Gampo Hills in central Tibet, where later the great teacher Gampopa established his monastery. Many other texts and sacred objects were buried in this way in different places throughout Tibet and are known as Terva, hidden treasures. Padmasava gave the transmission of power to discover the termas to his 25 chief disciples. The bardo texts were later discovered by Karma Lingpa, who was an incarnation of one of these disciples. Liberation in this case means that whoever comes into contact with this teaching, even in the form of doubt or with an open mind, receives a sudden glimpse of enlightenment through the power of the transmission contained in these treasures. Karma Lingpa belonged to Nyingma tradition, but his students were all of the Kagyu tradition. He gave the first transmission of the six liberation teachings to Doju Doje, the 13th, Kamapa, who in turn gave it to Giorme Tenfel, the eighth Trumpa. This transmission was kept alive in the Surmang monasteries of the Trumpa lineage, and from there it spread back into the Nyingma tradition. The student of this teaching practices the sadhana and studies the text so as to become completely familiar with the two mandalas as part of his own experience. I received this transmission at the age of eight and was trained in this teaching by my tutors who also guided me in dealing with dying people. Consequently, I visited dying or dead people about four times a week from that time onwards. I visited such continual contact with the process of death particularly watching one's close friends and relatives, is considered extremely important for students of this tradition, so that the notion of impermanence becomes a living experience, rather than a philosophical view. This book is a further attempt to make this teaching applicable to students in the West, I hope that the sadhana may also be translated in the near future so that this tradition may be fully carried out. Written by Chongyam Trumpa Rinpoche. I'm going to skip over the commentary and the introduction, which is quite long, about 74 pages long, so that we can get to the meat of the matter. Um, You know, you can always pick up the book um, if you want to delve more deeply into the various definitions and things, or you can just look it up online as you find uh, terms that are unfamiliar with you. But let's go right into the meat of it. The Tibetan Book of the Dead. Homage to the Gurus, the Trikayas, Amitabha, Infinite Light, the Dharmakaya, Peaceful and Wrathful Lotus Deities, and the Sambo Kokaya, Padma Samblava, protector of beings, the Nirmanakaya. This great liberation through hearing, the means of liberation in the bardo for yogins of average capacities, is in three parts, the introduction, the main subject matter, and the conclusion. Firstly, the introduction, the means of liberating human beings. 
First of all, one should have studied the instructions, which should certainly liberate those of the highest capacities. But if they do not, one should practice the ejection of consciousness, which liberates spontaneously as soon as it is thought of, in the bardo of the moment before death. This should certainly liberate yogins of average capacities, but if it does not, one should strive in this great liberation through hearing in the bardo of Dharmata. Therefore, the yogin should first examine the sequence of the signs of death according to the spontaneous liberation of the signs of death. And when they are definitely completed, he should effect the ejection of consciousness, which liberates spontaneously as soon as it is thought of. If ejection is effected, there's no need to read the liberation through hearing. But if not, it should be read clearly and precisely close to the dead body. If the body is not present, one should sit on the dead person's bed or seat and proclaiming the power of truth, call on his consciousness and read, imagining him sitting in front, listening. At this time, Sounds of crying and weeping are not good. So, his relative should be shut out. If the body is present, then during the interval between the ceasing of the breath and the ceasing of pulsation in the arteries, his guru or dharma brother or dharma sister, whom he loved and trusted, should read this great liberation through hearing close to his ear. The teaching of the liberation through hearing an elaborate offering should be made to the three jewels if the materials are available, but if they are not available, one should set out whatever there is and visualize the rest without limit. One should say the inspiration prayer calling on the Buddhas and Bohitavas for rescue seven or three times. Then loudly recite the inspiration prayer for deliverance from the dangerous pathway of the bardo and the main verses of the bardo. Then, read the great liberation through hearing seven or three times. It is in three parts, showing the luminosity in the bardo of the moment before death. The great reminder of showing in the bardo of Dharmata and the instructions for closing the entrance to the womb in the bardo of becoming. First, showing the luminosity in the bardo of the moment before death. By having this read to them, all kinds of ordinary people who have received teaching but have not recognized, although they are intelligent, or have recognized but have practiced little, will recognize the basic luminosity and bypass the bardo experience to reach the unoriginated dharmakaya. The method of instruction. It is best if his principal guru from whom he requested teaching can be present, but otherwise a Dharma brother or a Dharma sister with whom he has taken the Samaya vow, or a spiritual friend in the same lineage. If none of these are to be found, then someone who can read aloud clearly and precisely should read it several times. This will remind him of what his guru has shown him, and he will immediately recognize the basic luminosity and be liberated. There is no doubt. The time of instruction, when respiration has ceased, prana is absorbed into the wisdom duty, and luminosity, free from complexities, shines clearly in the consciousness. If prana is reversed and escapes into the right and left nadis, the bardo state appears suddenly, so the reading should take place before the prana escapes into the right and left nadis. The length of time during which the inner pulsation remains after respiration has ceased is just about the time taken to eat a meal. The method of instruction. It is best if ejection of consciousness is effected when the respiration is just about to stop. But if it has not been effected, one should say these words. O child of noble family, say the name. Now the time has come for you to seek a path. As soon as your breath stops, what is called the basic luminosity of the first bardo, which your guru has already shown you, will appear to you. 
This is the Dharmata, open and empty like space, luminous void, pure naked mind without center or circumference. Recognize then and rest in that state, and I too will show you at the same time. This should be firmly implanted in his mind by repeating it many times over in his ear until he stops breathing. Then, when the ceasing of the breath is heard, one should lay him down on the right side in the lion position and firmly press the two pulsating arteries which induce sleep until they have stopped throbbing. Then, the prana which has entered the dhuti will not be able to go back and will be certain to emerge through the Brahmarandra. Now the showing should be read. At this time, the first bardo, which is called the luminosity of Dharmata, the undistorted mind of the Dharmakaya, arises in the mind of all beings. Ordinary people call this state unconscious because the prana sinks into the avaduti during the interval between the ceasing of the breath and of the pulsation. The time it lasts is uncertain, depending on the spiritual condition and the state of yogic training. It lasts for a long time in those who have practiced much, were steady in the meditation practice of tranquility, and sensitive. In striving to show such a person, one should repeat the instruction until pus comes out from the apertures of his body. In wicked and insensitive people, it does not last longer than a single snapping of the fingers. But in some, it lasts for the time taken to eat a meal. As most sutras and tantras say, that this unconscious state lasts for four and a half days, generally, one should strive to show the luminosity for that length of time. The method of instruction. If he is able, he will work with himself from the instructions already given. But if he cannot by himself, then his guru or disciple of his guru or Dhamma brother or Dhamma sister who is a close friend should stay nearby and read aloud clearly the sequence of the signs of death. Quote, Now the sign of earth dissolving into water is present, water into fire, fire into air, air into consciousness. End quote. When the sequence is, is almost completed, he should be encouraged to adopt an attitude like this. Quote, O child of noble family, end quote. Or if he was a guru, quote, O sir, end quote. Quote, do not let your thoughts wander, end quote. This should be spoken softly in his ear. In the case of a Dharma brother, a Dharma sister, or anyone else, one should call him by name and say these words. O oh, child of noble family, that which is called death has now arrived. So you should adopt this attitude. I have arrived at the time of death. So now, by means of this death, I will adopt only the attitude of the enlightened state of mind, friendliness and compassion, and attain perfect enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings, as limitless as space. With this attitude, at this special time for the sake of all sentient beings, I will recognize the luminosity of death as the Dharmakaya, and attaining in that state the supreme realization of the great symbol, I will act for the good of all beings. If I do not attain this, I will recognize the Bardo state as it is, and attain the indivisible great symbol form in the Bardo. I will act for the good of all beings as limitless as space in whatever way will influence them. Without letting go of this attitude, you should remember and practice whatever meditation teaching you have received in the past. These words should be spoken distinctly with the lips close to his ear so as to remind him of his practice without letting his attention wander even for a moment. Then, when respiration has completely stopped, one should firmly press the arteries of sleep and remind him with these words if he was a guru or spiritual friend higher than oneself. Sir, now the basic luminosity is shining before you. 
recognize it, and rest in the practice. And one should show all others like this. O child of noble family, say their name, listen. Now the pure luminosity of the Dharmata is shining before you. Recognize it. O child of noble family, at this moment your state of mind is by nature pure emptiness. It does not possess any nature whatever, neither substance nor quality, such as color, but it is pure emptiness. This is the Dharmata, the female Buddha, Samantabhadri, but this state of mind is not just blank emptiness. It is unobstructed, sparkling, pure, and vibrant. This mind is the male Buddha, Samantabhadra. These two, your mind, whose nature is emptiness without any substance whatever, and your mind, which is vibrant and luminous, are inseparable. This is the Dharmakaya of the Buddha. This mind of yours is inseparable luminosity and emptiness in the form of a great mass of light. It has no birth or death. Therefore, it is the Buddha of immortal light. To recognize this is all that is necessary. When you recognize this pure nature of your mind as the Buddha, looking into your own mind is resting in the Muda mind. This should be repeated three or seven times, clearly and precisely. Firstly, it will remind him of what he has previously been shown by his guru. Secondly, he will recognize his own naked mind as the luminosity. And thirdly, having recognized himself, he will become inseparably united with the Dharmakaya and certainly attain liberation. If he recognizes the first luminosity, he will be liberated. But if it is feared that he has not recognized the first luminosity, then what is called the second luminosity will shine, and that comes when a little more than the time taken to eat a meal has passed, after the respiration has ceased. According to the good or bad karma, the prana escapes into the right or left nadi and comes out through the apertures of the body, and the consciousness suddenly becomes clear. To say that this lasts for the time taken to eat a meal depends on whether he is sensitive or insensitive and on whether or not he has practiced. Then his consciousness emerges and he does not know whether he is dead or not. He will see his relatives gathered there just as before and hear their cries. During this time, when the violent, confused projections of karma have not yet appeared and the terrors of the lords of death have not yet come, the instructions should be given. Here, there is a distinction between the perfect stage and the generation stage. If he was working on the perfect stage, one should call his name three times and repeat the instructions given above for showing the luminosity. If he was working on the generation stage, one should read aloud the sadhana and description of his yidam and remind him with these words, O child of noble family, meditate on your yidam and do not be distracted. Concentrate intensely on your yidam. Visualize him as an appearance without substance of its own, like the moon in water. Do not visualize him as having a solid form. If he is an ordinary person, one should show him by saying, Meditate on the Lord of the Great Compassion. Footnote, Yidam. Let's take a look at what that means exactly. So, over to notes. The Yidam is a particular deity which represents the disciple's innate enlightened nature, chosen by his guru to correspond to his own characteristics and the practice he is following. It is said that Avalokitsevara, the Lord of great compassion, is suitable for everyone. So an ordinary person, one who's not a guru or one who has not studied, one who has not been given a specific idam, should meditate on him, the Lord of great compassion. There is no doubt 
that those who have not recognized the bardo will grasp it by being shown in this way. But those who were not adept in meditation, even if they were shown by their guru while they were alive, will not be able to clarify the bardo state by themselves, so that their guru, his dharma brother or dharma sister, must make it clear. And it is necessary for someone to instruct those who cannot remember during the bardo of the moment before death because they were confused by serious illness, even though they were adept in meditation. It is also extremely necessary for those who, although they were formerly adept in meditation on this path, may enter into lower existence because they have broken the precepts or because their samaya practice has degenerated. It is best if he understands during the first bardo, but if he has not understood, his insight is awakened by the reminder in the second bardo, and he will be liberated. During the second bardo, his consciousness, which did not know whether he was dead or not, suddenly becomes clear. This is called pure, illusory body. If he understands the teaching at this time, the mother and son dharmatas meet, and he is no longer dominated by karma. Just as the light of the sun overcomes darkness, so the power of karma is overcome by the luminosity of the path, and the liberation is attained. This, which is called the second bardo, flashes before the mental body, and the consciousness is able to hear again, just as before. If this instruction is understood at this time, its purpose is fulfilled. And since the confused projections of karma have not yet appeared, he is able to direct himself anywhere. In this way, he is liberated by recognizing the luminosity during the second bardo, even if he did not recognize the basic luminosity. But if he is not liberated by it, then what is called the third bardo, the bardo of Dharmata, arises. The confused projections of karma will appear in the third bardo, so it is most important that the great showing of the bardo of Dharmata is read at this time for it is very powerful and helpful. At this time, his relatives are crying and weeping. His share of food is stopped. His clothes are removed. His bed is taken to pieces, and so on. He can see them, but they cannot see him. And he could hear them calling him, but they cannot hear him calling them. So he goes away in despair. Three phenomena will appear at this time. Sounds, colored lights, and rays of light, and he will grow faint with fear, terror, and bewilderment. So at this moment, the great showing of the bardo of Dharmata should be read. Calling the dead person by name, one should say these words very distinctly. O oh, child of noble family, listen carefully without distraction. There are six bardo states. The bardo of birth the bardo of dreams, the bardo of samdhi meditation, the bardo of the moment before death, the bardo of dharmata, and the bardo of becoming. O oh, child of noble family, you will experience three bardo states, the bardo of the moment before death, the bardo of dharmata, and the bardo of becoming. Of these three, the luminosity of Dharmata in the bardo of the moment before death shone until yesterday, but you did not recognize it. And so you had to wander here. Now you will experience the bardo of Dharmata and the bardo of becoming. So recognize what I will show you without distraction. O oh, child of noble family, now what is called death has arrived. You are not alone in leaving this world. It happens to everyone, so do not feel desire and yearning for this life. Even if you feel desire and yearning, you cannot stay. You can only wander into samsara. Do not desire. Do not yearn. Remember the three jewels. O oh, child of noble family, whatever terrifying projections appear in the bardo of Dharmata, do not forget these words, but go forward, remembering their meaning. The essential point is to recognize with them. Now, when the bardo of Dharmata dawns upon me, I will abandon all thoughts of fear and terror. I will recognize whatever appears as my projection, and know it to be a vision of the bardo. Now that I have reached this crucial point, 
I will not fear the peaceful and wrathful ones, my own projections. Go forward saying these words clearly and distinctly, and remember their meaning. Do not forget them, for the essential point is to recognize with certainty that whatever appears, however terrifying, is your own projection. O oh, child of noble family, when your body and mind separate, the Dharmata will appear, pure and clear, yet hard to discern, luminous and brilliant, with terrifying brightness, shimmering like a mirage on the plain in spring. Do not be afraid of it. Do not be bewildered. This is the natural radiance of your own Dharmata. Therefore, recognize it. A great roar of thunder will come from within the light. The natural sound of Damarta, like a thousand thunderclaps simultaneously. This is the natural sound of your own Damarta, so do not be afraid or bewildered. You have what is called a mental body of unconscious tendencies. You have no physical body of flesh and blood, so whatever Sounds, colors, and rays of light occur, they cannot hurt you, and you cannot die. It is enough simply to recognize them as your projections. Know this to be the bardo state. O child of noble family, if you do not recognize them in this way as your projections, whatever meditation practice you have done during your life, if you not have not met with this teaching, the colored lights will frighten you, the sounds will bewilder you, and the rays of light will terrify you. If you do not understand this essential point of the teaching, you will not recognize the sounds, lights, and rays, and so you will wander in samsara. O oh, child of noble family, after being unconscious for four and a half days, you will move on, and awakening from your fate, you will wonder what has happened to you. So recognize it as the bardo state. At that time, samsara is reversed and everything you see appears as lights and images. The whole of space will shine with a blue light and the blessed Vairokkana will appear before you from the central realm, all-pervading circle. His body is white in color. He sits on a lion throne, holding an eight-spoked wheel in his hand and embracing his consort, the queen of Vajra space. The blue light of the skanda of consciousness in its basic purity, the wisdom of the Dharma Datu, luminous, clear, sharp, and brilliant, will come towards you from the heart of Vairokkana and his consort and pierce you so that your eyes cannot bear it. At the same time, together with it, the soft white light of the gods will also come towards you and pierce you. At that time, under the influence of bad karma, you will be terrified and escape from the wisdom of the Dharmatatu with its bright blue light. But you will feel an emotion of pleasure towards the soft white light of the gods. At that moment, do not be frightened or bewildered by the luminous, brilliant, very sharp and clear blue light of supreme wisdom, for it is the light ray of the Buddha, which is called the wisdom of the Dhamma Atu. Be drawn to it with faith and devotion, and supplicate it, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Vairokana's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is blessed Vairokkana coming to invite you in the dangerous pathway of the bardo. It is the light ray of Vairokkana's compassion. Do not take pleasure in the soft white light of the gods. Do not be attracted to it or yearn for it. If you are attracted to it, you will wander into the realm of gods and circle among the six kinds of existence. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not look at it, but feel longing for the bright blue light and repeat this inspiration prayer after me with intense concentration on blessed Vairokkana. When through intense ignorance I wander in samsara, 
on the luminous light path of the Dharma to wisdom. Nay, blessed Vairokana go before me, his consort, the queen of Vajra space behind me. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Vairokana and his consort and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the central realm, the densely arrayed. But if even after being shown he is afraid of the lights and the rays because of his aggression and neurotic veils and he escapes, and if he is confused even after saying the prayer, then on the second day, Vajrasattva's circle of deities will come to invite him, together with his bad karma, which leads to hell. So, to show him, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O oh, child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the second day, a white light, the purified element of water, will shine. And at the same time, blessed Vajrasattva Aksobhya will appear before you from the blue eastern realm of complete joy. His body is blue in color. He holds a five-pointed Vajra in his hand and sits on an elephant throne, embracing his consort, Buddha Lokana. He is accompanied by the two male Bohitsavas, Kitsitikarva and Maitreya, and the two female Bohitsavas, Lesya and Pupspa, so that six Buddha forms appear. The white light of the skanda of form in its basic purity, the mirror-like wisdom, dazzling white, luminous and clear, will come towards you from the heart of Vadrasattva and his consort and pierce you so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft, smoky light of hell beings will also come towards you and pierce you. At that time, under the influence of aggression, you will be terrified and escape from the brilliant white light, but you will feel an emotion of pleasure towards the soft, smoky light of hell beings. At that moment, do not be afraid of the sharp, brilliant, luminous, and clear white light, but recognize it as wisdom. Be drawn to it with faith and longing, and supplicate it, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Vajrasattva's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is, blessed Var Vajrasattva's coming to invite you in the terrors of the bardo. It is the light ray hook of Vajrasattva's compassion, so feel longing for it. Do not take pleasure in the soft smoky light of the hell beings. This is the inviting path of the veils of error, accumulated by your violent aggression. If you are attracted to it, you will fall down into hell and sink into the muddy swamp of unbearable suffering from which there is never any escape. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not look at it, but give up aggression. Do not be attracted to it. Do not yearn for it. Feel longing for the luminous, brilliant white light and say this inspiration prayer with intense concentration on blessed Vashrasattva. When through intense aggression I wander in samsara, on the luminous light path of the mirror-like wisdom, may blessed Vajrasattva go before me, his consort, Buralunkana, behind me. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light, in the heart of blessed Vajrasattva and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the eastern realm of complete joy. Yet, even after being shown in this way, some people are afraid of the light ray book hook of compassion because of their pride and veils of error and they escape. So then, on the third day, blessed Ratna Sablava's circle of deities will come to invite them. 
together with the light path to the human realm. So, to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the third day, a yellow light, the purified element of earth, will shine. And at the same time, blessed Ratnasambhava will appear before you. From the yellow southern realm, the glorious. His body is yellow in color. He holds a wish-fulfilling jewel in his hand and sits on a horse throne, embracing his consort, Mamaki. He is accompanied by the two male bohitsavas, Akasagarbha and Samantanpadra, and the two female bohitsavas, Mala and Dupa so that six Buddha forms appear out of the space of rainbow light, the yellow light of the skanda of feeling in its basic purity, the wisdom of equality, brilliant yellow, adorned with disks of light, luminous and clear, unbearable to the eyes, will come towards you from the heart of Ratna Sambhava and his consort, and pierce your heart, so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it, At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft blue light of human beings will also pierce your heart. At that time, under the influence of pride, you will be terrified and escape from the sharp, clear yellow light. But you will feel an emotion of pleasure and attraction towards the soft blue light of human beings. At that moment, do not be afraid of the yellow light, luminous and clear, sharp and bright, but recognize it as wisdom. Let your mind rest in it relaxed, in a state of non-action, and be drawn to it with longing. If you recognize it as the natural radiance of your own mind, even though you do not feel devotion and do not say the inspiration prayer, all the forms and lights and rays will merge inseparably with you, and you will attain enlightenment. If you cannot recognize it as the natural radiance of your own mind, supplicate it with devotion, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Ratnasambhava's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is the light ray hook of blessed Ratnasambhava's compassion. So feel longing for it. Do not take pleasure in the soft blue light of human beings. That is the inviting light path of unconscious tendencies, accumulated by your intense pride. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the human realm and experience birth, old age, death and suffering, and never escape from the muddy swamp of samsara. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not look at it. But give up pride. Give up your unconscious tendencies. Do not be attracted to it. Do not yearn for it. Feel longing for the luminous, brilliant yellow light and say this inspiration prayer with intense one-pointed concentration on blessed Ratna Sambhava. When through intense pride I wander in samsara, on the luminous light path of the wisdom of equality, may blessed Ratna Sambhava go before me, his consort, Amaki, behind me, help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway, and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Ratna Sambhava and his consort, and become a Sambhakokaya Buddha in the southern realm, the glorious. By being shown in this way, liberation is certain, however weak one's capacities may be. Yet, even after being shown like this many times, there are people whose good opportunities have run out, such as those who have done great evil or let their samaya practice degenerate, who will not recognize. Disturbed by desire and the veils of error, they will be afraid of sounds and lights and will escape. So then, on the fourth day, blessed Amitabha's circle of deities will come to invite them, together with the light path of the hungry ghosts, built from desire and meanness. To show him again, 
one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O oh, child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the fourth day, a red light, the purified element of fire, will shine. At the same time, blessed Amitabha will appear before you from the red western realm, the blissful. His body is red in color. He holds a lotus in his hand and sits on a peacock throne, embracing his consort, Pandaravasini. He is accompanied by the two male bodhisattvas, Avalakotisivara and Majustri, and the two female bodhisattvas, Gita and Aloka, so that six Buddha forms appear out of the space of rainbow light the red light of the skanda of perception in its basic purity, the wisdom of discrimination, brilliant red, adorned with disks of light, luminous and clear, sharp and bright, will come from the heart of Amitabha and his consort, and pierce your heart so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. Do not be afraid of it. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts will also shine. Do not take pleasure in it. Give up desire and yearning. At that time, under the influence of intense desire, you will be terrified and escape from the sharp bright red light. But you will feel pleasure and attraction towards the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts. At that moment, do not fear the red light, sharp and brilliant, luminous and clear but recognize it as wisdom. Let your mind rest on it, relaxed, in a state of non-action. Be drawn to it with faith and longing. If you recognize it as your own natural radiance, even if you do not feel devotion and do not say the inspiration prayer, all the forms and lights and rays will merge inseparably with you and you will in attain enlightenment. If you cannot recognize it in this way, supplicate it with devotion, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Amitabha's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is the light ray hook of blessed Amitabha's compassion. Feel devotion and do not escape. Even if you escape it, will stay with you inseparably. Do not be afraid. Do not be attracted to the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts. That is the light path of unconscious tendencies accumulated by your intense desire. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the realm of hungry ghosts and experience unbearable misery from hunger and thirst. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation. So do not be attracted to it. But give up your unconscious tendencies. Do not yearn for it. Feel longing for the luminous, bright, red light. And say this inspiration prayer with intense, one-pointed concentration on blessed Amitabha and his consort. When through intense desire I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of discriminating wisdom, may blessed Amitabha go before me his consort, Pandarava Sini, behind me. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Amitabha, infinite light, with his consort, and become a Sambhokakaya Buddha in the Western realm, the blissful. It is impossible not to be liberated by this yet. Even after being shown in this way, sentient beings cannot give up their unconscious tendencies because of long habituation. And under the influence of envy and evil karma, they are afraid of the sounds and lights. They are not caught by the light ray hook of compassion, but wander downwards to the fifth day of the bardo state. So then, blessed... Omagasi, 
circle of deities with their light rays of compassion will come to invite them. And the light path of the jealous gods built from the emotion of envy will also invite them. Then, to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the fifth day a green light, the purified element of air, will shine. And at the same time, blessed Omag Sidi, Lord of the circle, will appear before you from the green northern realm, accumulated actions. His body is green in color. He holds a double Vajra in his hand and sits on the throne of Shang Shang birds, soaring in the sky, embracing his consort, Samayatara. He is accompanied by the two male Bodhisattvas, Vajrapani and Sarvanivarana Vishkambin, and the two female Bodhisattvas, Ganda and Naivadya, so that six Buddha forms appear out of the space of rainbow light. The green light of the skanda of concept in its basic purity, the action accomplishing wisdom, brilliant green, luminous and clear, sharp and terrifying, adorned with disks of light, will come from the heart of Omagishtiti and his consort and pierce your heart so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. Do not be afraid of it. It is the spontaneous play of your own mind. So rest in the supreme state, free from activity and care, in which there is no near or far, love or hate. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft red light of the jealous gods, caused by envy, will also shine on you. Meditate so that there is no difference between love and hate. But if your intelligence is weak, then simply do not take pleasure in it. At that time, under the influence of intense envy, you will be terrified and escape from the sharp, brilliant green light. But you will feel pleasure and attraction towards the soft red light of the jealous gods. At that moment, do not be afraid of the green light, sharp and brilliant, luminous and clear, but recognize it as wisdom. Let your mind rest in it, relaxed, in a state of non-action, and supplicated with devotion, thinking it is the light ray of blessed Omaxidi's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is the light ray hook of blessed Omaxidi's compassion, called the action accomplishing wisdom. So long for it and do not escape, even if you escape it will stay with you. Do not be afraid of it. Do not be attracted to the soft red light of the jealous gods. That is the inviting path of karma accumulated by your intense envy. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the realm of the jealous gods and experience unbearable misery from fighting and quarreling. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not be attracted to it. But give up your unconscious tendencies. Feel longing for the luminous, brilliant green light and say this inspiration prayer with intense one-pointed concentration on blessed Amaga Sidi and his consort. When through intense envy I wander in samsara, on the luminous light path of action accomplishing wisdom, may blessed Omag Sidi go before me, his consort, Samayatara, behind me, help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Omag Sidi and his consort and become a Sambukkaya, Buddha, in the northern realm, perfected actions. However weak his good karmic results may be, 
By being shown like this in many stages, if he does not recognize at one, he will at another. So it is impossible not to be liberated, but even after being shown in this way many times, those who have been habituated to many unconscious tendencies for a long time and have never become familiar with the pure visions of the five wisdoms are carried backwards by their bad tendencies, even though they are shown so that they are not caught by the light ray hook of compassion, but become bewildered and frightened by the lights and rays and wander downwards. So then on the sixth day, the Buddhas of the five families with their consorts and attendant deities will appear simultaneously, and at the same time the lights of the six realms will also shine simultaneously. To show him, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O oh, child of noble family, listen without distraction, even though you were shown when the light of each of the five families appeared until yesterday. Under the influence of bad tendencies, you were bewildered by them, and so you have remained here until now. If you had recognized the natural radiance of the wisdoms of those five families as your own projection, you would have dissolved into rainbow light in the body of one of the five families and become... Asambhob Gaya Buddha Bhat, because you did not recognize. You have gone on wandering here until this time. So now, watch without distraction. Now the five families will appear all together, and what is called the four wisdoms combined will come to invite you. Recognize them. O child of noble family, the four colored lights of the four purified elements will shine. At the same time, the Buddha, Vairokkana, and his consort will appear just as before from the central realm, all pervading circle. The Buddha, Vajrasattva, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the eastern realm, complete joy. The Buddha, Ratnasambhava, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the southern realm, the glorious. The Buddha, Amitabha, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the western blissful realm of lotuses. And the Buddha, Amuksadi, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the northern realm, perfected actions, out of the space of rainbow light. O child of noble family, beyond those Buddhas of the five families, the wrathful guardians of the gates will also appear. Vijaya, the victorious. Yamantaka, destroyer of death. Hayagriva, the horse-necked and Amrakundali, coil of nectar, and the female guardians of the gates, Ankusha, the hook, Pasa, the noose, Srinkala, the chain, Ganta, the bell, the six sages, the blessed ones, will also appear, Indra, of the hundred sacrifices, sage of the gods, Vimasitra, splendid robe, sage of jealous gods, the Lion of Sakyas, Sage of Human Beings. Dhruvashina, Steadfast Lion, Sage of the Animals. Yavathmukka, Flaming Mouth, Sage of the Hungry Ghosts. And Dharmaraja, the Dharma King, Sage of the Hell Beings. Samantabra and Samantabaritri the all-good father and mother of all the Buddhas, will also appear. These 42 deities of the Sambukkaya will emerge from within your own heart and appear before you. They are the pure form of your projections. So recognize them. O oh, child of noble family, those realms too do not exist anywhere else but lie in the four directions of your heart with the corner as fifth. And now they emerge from within your heart and appear before you. These images, too, do not come from anywhere else, but are primordial, spontaneous play of your mind. So recognize them in this way. O oh, child of noble family, these images are neither large nor small, but perfectly proportioned. They each have their own adornments, their costume, their color, their posture, their throne, and their symbol. They are spread out in five couples. Each of the five in is encircled by a halo of the five colored lights. The whole mandala, the male and female deities of the families, will appear 
completely, all at once. Recognize them, for they are your yidams. O child of noble family, from the hearts of those Buddhas of the five families and their consorts, the light rays of the four wisdoms will each shine upon your heart, very fine and clear, like sunbeams stretched out. First, the wisdom of the Dharma Hatu, a cloth of luminous white light rays, brilliant and terrifying, will shine upon your heart from the heart of Airokana. In this cloth of light rays, a sparkling white disk will appear, very clear and bright, like a mirror facing downwards, adorned with five disks like itself, ornamented with disks and smaller disks, so that it has no center or circumference. From the heart of Vajrasattva, on the luminous blue cloth of the mirror-like wisdom will appear a blue disk, like a turquoise bowl, face downwards, adorned with disks and smaller disks. From the heart of Ratna Sambhava, on the luminous yellow cloth of the wisdom of equality, will appear a yellow disk like a golden bowl, face downwards, adorned with disks and smaller disks. From the heart of Amitabha, on the luminous red cloth of the wisdom of discrimination, will appear a sparkling red disc, like a coral bowl, face downwards, shining with the deep light of wisdom, very clear and bright, adorned with five discs like itself, ornamented with discs and smaller discs, so that it has no center or circumference. They, too, will shine upon your heart. O oh, child of noble family, these also have arisen out of the spontaneous play of your own mind. They have not come from anywhere else, so do not be attracted to them. Do not fear them, but stay relaxed, in a state free from thought. In that state, all the images and light rays will merge with you, and you will attain enlightenment. O oh, child of noble family, the green light of action accomplishing wisdom does not appear because the energy of your wisdom is not yet fully matured. O oh, child of noble family, this is called the experience of the four wisdoms combined, the passageway of Vajrasattva. At this time, remember your guru's precious teachings on the showing. If you remember the meaning of the showing, you will have faith in your earlier experiences, and so you will recognize them, like the meeting of mother and son, or like seeing old friends again. As though cutting off doubt, you will recognize your own projections and enter the pure, changeless path of the Dharmata. And through that faith, a continuous meditative state will arise, and you will dissolve into the great self-existing form of wisdom, and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha who never falls back. O oh, child of noble family, together with the wisdom lights, the lights of the impure, illusory six realms will shine. The soft white light of the gods, the soft red light of the jealous gods, the soft blue light of human beings, the soft green light of the animals, the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts, and the soft, smoky light of hell beings. These six will shine together with the pure wisdom lights. At that moment, do not grasp or be attracted to any of them, but stay relaxed, in a state free from thought. If you are afraid of the pure wisdom lights and attracted to the impure lights of the six realms, you will take on the body of a creature of the six realms, and you will grow weary, for there is never any escape from the great ocean of the misery of samsara. O child of noble family, if you have not been shown by a guru's instruction, you will be afraid of those image and pure wisdom lights. And attracted to the impure lights of samsara, do not do so, but feel devotion to the pure wisdom lights, sharp and brilliant. Think with devotion, the light rays of the wisdom and compassion of the blessed ones. The Buddhas of the five families have come to seize me with compassion. I take refuge in them. Do not be attracted to the lights of the six realms of illusion. Do not yearn for them, but say this inspiration prayer with intense one-pointed concentration on the Buddhas of the five families and their consorts. When through the five poisons I wander in samsara, on the luminous path of the four wisdoms combined. May the conquerors, the five families, go before me. 
the consorts of the five families behind me. Save me from the light paths of the six impure realms. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the five pure Buddha realms. By saying this inspiration prayer, the superior person recognizes his own projections and merging with non-duality becomes a Buddha. The average person recognizes himself through intense devotion and attains liberation. Even the inferior person prevents rebirth in the six realms by the purifying power of the prayer and understanding the meaning of the four wisdoms combined attains enlightenment by the passageway of Vajrasattva. By being shown clearly and precisely in this way, many sentient beings will recognize and be liberated. But some, such as inferior people in uncivilized places and wicked people who have no experience of Dharma at all, and those who have let their Samaya practice degenerate are confused by their karma and do not recognize even when they are shown, but wander downwards. So on the seventh day, the Vidyadharas will come from the pure realm of space to invite them. And at the same time, the light path of the animals produced from the emotion of ignorance will also meet them. At that time, to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the seventh day, a pure, many-colored light will shine in your unconscious mind, and the Vijadharas will come from the pure realm of space to invite you. In the center of a mandala filled with rainbow light, he who is called the unsurpassable, fully developed Vijadhara, Lotus Lord of Dance, will appear, his body bright with the five colors, embracing his consort, the Red Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the east of the mandala, he who is called Vidyadhara, established in the stages, will appear, white in color, with a radiant face, embracing his consort, the white Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the south of the mandala, he who is called the Lord of Life, Vidyadhara, will appear, yellow in color, with beautiful form, embracing his consort, the yellow Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the west of the mandala, he who is called the great symbol Vidyadhara will appear red in color, with a radiant smiling face, embracing his consort, the red Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the north of the mandala, he who is called the spontaneously arisen Vijadara will appear green in color, his expression both angry and smiling, embracing his consort, the green Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. Beyond those Vijadharas will appear countless crowds of Dakinis, Dakinis of the eight charnel grounds, Dakinis of the four families, Dakinis of the three worlds, Dakinis of the ten directions, Dakinis of the twenty-four places of pilgrimage, male and female warriors and servants, and all the male and female protectors of Dharma, wearing the six bone ornaments with drums, thigh bone trumpets, skull drums, banners made from the skins of youths, canopies made from human skin, ribbons of human skin, and incense made from human flesh, with countless different kinds of musical instruments, filling all the regions of the universe so that they rock and tremble and shake, making all the instruments vibrate with music, so as to split one's head, dancing various dances, they will come to invite those who have kept the Samaya practice and to punish those who have let it degenerate. 
O oh, child of noble family, in the realm of the unconscious, the pure innate wisdom shining with the five colored lights like colored threads twisted together, flashing, vibrating, shimmering, luminous and clear, sharp and terrifying, will come from the hearts of the five Vijadara lords and pierce your heart so that the eye cannot bear it. At the same time, the soft green light of the animals will also shine together with the wisdom light. At that time, under the influence of confusion caused by unconscious tendencies, you will be afraid and escape from the five-colored light, but you will be attracted to the soft light of the animals. At that moment, do not be afraid of the bright, sharp, five-colored light. Do not fear it, but recognize it as wisdom. From within the light of the all spontaneous sounds of the Dharma will come like the roar of a thousand thunderclaps. It rolls and thunders and resounds with war cries and the penetrating sound of wrathful mantras. Do not be afraid of it. Do not escape. Do not fear. Recognize it as the play of your mind your own projection. Do not be attracted to the soft green light of the animals. Do not yearn for it. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the animal realm of ignorance and experience the extreme suffering of stupidity, dumbness, and slavery from which there is no escape. So do not be attracted to it. Feel longing for the clear, bright light of the five colors and concentrate one-pointedly on the blessed Vijadharas, the divine teachers, thinking. These Vijadharas, with the warriors and Dakinis, have come to invite me to the pure realm of space. Please, all oh, give thought to sentient beings like me, who have not gathered merit and have not been caught, although until today the light rays of compassion of so many deities, of the five families of Buddhas of past, present, and future, reached out, alas, for one like me. Now, all you Vidyadharas, do not let me go any lower than this, but grasp me with your hooks of compassion and pull me up quickly to the pure realm of space with intense, one-pointed concentration. Say this inspiration prayer. May the divine Vidyadharas think of me and with great love lead me on the path. When through intense tendencies I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of the innate wisdom, may Vidyadharas and warriors go before me, their consorts, the Dakinis, behind me. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the pure realm of space. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of the divine Vijadharas and be born in the pure realm of space. There is no doubt. All the types of spiritual friends, too, recognize as a result of this, and all are liberated. Even those with bad unconscious tendencies are certainly liberated here. The end of the first part of the great liberation through hearing, showing the luminosity during the bardo of the moment before death, and showing during the peaceful bardo of the Dharmata, Iti, Samaya, Riga, Riga, Riga.